Good afternoon, everyone. This is uh, this is voices from World Citizen. I'm Carl Lu, host for today. Today I'm here with Echo. Uh, Echo is a friend uh, I only met once, like a uh, year ago. And um, so I actually very interested to find out her story. Um, hey, Echo. Hi. Hello, everyone. <laughs> so, would you like to introduce yourself? Uh, about my job or, or whatever. Like uh, what you do and uh, um, I work as a from? freelancer in Shanghai. I've been in Shanghai for uh, almost five years now, and then I work in public relations. I quit my job in the end of 2018, so have been roaming around, traveling, doing my own stuff for almost two years now. Yeah, that's what I do. I see. Um, well, the reason why I want to interview Echo is during this pandemic, Echo was was on the way the whole time, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And I had no experience. Yeah, yeah. So I, I was really curious to uh, to to get to know your experience. Mm -hmm. What happens and. Uh, how you feel? Uh, well, I uh, to, to start with the story, I'm gonna briefly talk about uh, what I had experienced in the last uh, couple of months. So basically, in the end of January, I went to Europe, basically kind of uh, to to meet some of my friends and also to have a child because at that time it was kind of terrible in China. I was like, okay, it's Chinese New Year, so it's kind of like holiday, really slow season for the business here. Here to Europe and take some holiday. So I started there. I went to Madrid first, and then I went to Paris, basically all around Europe, and then until. March, the, the pandemic started to hit you like really hard, and I couldn't come back basically. But I was really lucky because I had a place to stay with my friend in Berlin. So after living with my friend in Berlin for like over a month, something till end of um, April, mm -hmm. I finally managed to get a ticket back home. And then um, uh, since I came back home, I need to do the hotel quarantine for two weeks, and then I need to buy a ticket from the quarantine city to Shanghai. And then that's here, I'm, I'm back in Shanghai. <laughs> yeah. So, so during the whole uh, you know procedure what is your main challenge um, I think my main challenge I think is try to communicate with like outside word about the difficulty that have been going on because I don't understand like exactly what's the situation because I mean for the people who don't understand like the travel ban policy all the changes I mean they have no idea to imagine what's the difficulty so people start to question you know, why don't you come back like why you couldn't buy a ticket back but, they basically don't know what difficult I'm actually facing and they just start to judge you, oh why don't you want to come back? Why are you stuck there? Why are you still there? Like whining every day about your misery but like, but yeah, but that's true. <laughs> I see, I yeah. see. Like, uh, uh, and uh, is there anything happened uh, which uh, make you feel uh, like appreciated for? I think I was really appreciating my friend in Berlin who kindly offered me a place to live and then he told me I could live as long as I want so that's really precious for me at that time because imagine if I'm traveling I need to uh, shuffle in between Airbnbs and hotel, hotels and I don't have a place to eat, to sleep I mean basically that's going to be first of all one, one thing is going to be much more expensive than the cost I was having uh, earlier and also I mean it was quite important for you to live with someone to share your life when you are like huge pressure and stress so he really helped me out a lot. Mm -hmm. So, did you learn anything new um, after this uh, experience? Uh, it's, um, I think it's more about e emotional things. Like, I know how to balance my emotions like, much better than before. I know how to handle with my stress also like much better than before. And I know how to appreciate and how to deal with my like my relationship with outside people. Like before, I think it was quite easy for me to be affected like by my friends, like by their opinions. But then. Since this time I realized it's more important actually to live your own life. Like you shouldn't care about what people think about it because no one actually truly understands what's your opinion and your situation. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I see. And uh, is this pandemic also a factor? You you are freelancer, right? Basically. Yes, I'm a freelancer. Yeah. So how? You before pandemic and after the pan pandemic? Anything? Yeah, yeah. Uh, the business in my whole uh, industry is getting slower. Mm -hmm. I think basically because I work in public relations and then two big part of my work, one is media, so we do like offline events, events. And then because of the pandemic, so basically it's impossible to um, host any events like now, till now even. But the another part of my work is like about content, so we work in social media.
media with where I can write in content for my clients or for media. Uh, but that part actually is growing quite normally. So I wouldn't say I'm not that like unlucky because I still have some projects to do. I still have some savings or like some also like income to cover my basis. I think that should be fine. Of course, I mean, I'm earning less money than before, but I mean, in this difficult year, I should. I think I'm still lucky. <laughs> Uh, is there any um, like a, is there any like plan for this year being changed because of that? Well, because um, this year I'm going to be 25, so originally I had some plan to go to Africa to climb the Mount Kilimanjaro. Was my kind of like my milestone for my 25 year old birthday. Apparently this year I don't think I can make it. So I think my plan for this year is just trying to save my energy and my money for like next year. I want to do like a long like maybe four months trip something in Latin America. Uh -huh. Which is something I just feel like is urging me to do so because um, before you always think my travel is such a like easy thing you can just go buy a ticket, plan and pack yourself and then okay you're there. But now like you don't know what is going to happen. So I think for me I I, I, I love travel so much and I think this is like a chance to remind me that like, you should treasure the chances and opportunities to travel even more when everything's back to normal. Yeah. What makes you like uh, traveling that much? I think traveling is like uh, you are breaking the limits of your own original life. Like I'm living in Shanghai, basically I feel Shanghai is like my comfort zone. I know all the places to go, my friend is here, my work is here, I have a really stable life here. But when travel, you learn new things, you talk to new people, you always like embrace the new cultures and new difficulties. And you embrace yourself with the kind of like the new environment, so like whether it's like a city side, like the historical things, or it's like kind of like natural view. I was in Iceland this March before the epidemic hit Europe. I was just like amazed by Iceland. I mean, it's kind of like a gift to give a better nature to us. But for the people who haven't been there, maybe they wouldn't understand like how generous nature is to us. I mean, this kind of thing is really hard to have a view about it if you're living in Shanghai all the time. It's just so different. It blew up my mind. Mm -hmm. I see, I see. I think that's also a great reason why uh, I interview you mm -hmm. because you basically, I think you should be a a strong believer about uh, world citizenship. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do. Yeah. I don't think let me wish it's any boundary for our life or our you know values or something. Mm -hmm. Because well, there are a lot of things that should be universal. You should have like open mind to accept this kind of things. And for that, I think it's one of the criteria of being a world citizen. Mm -hmm. So how you define world citizen? I think what is it is, um, you can be patriotic about your country, but you should also have an open mind to accept other things, other countries, and you should be friendly, you shouldn't be judgmental to evaluate or like for the anything that's happened around you. You should always be grateful for what is happening around you, you should always be ready to help people who are in need, no matter of their, uh, of their race, of their nationality, of their gender, for me that's what I understand as a word. Like, uh, like back to humanity, yeah, like, like back to humanity. Mm -hmm. Because I mean, these days, because of the pandemic and also the virus situation, I mean, I can see like all those political fights over the countries and over and over again. I feel like kids arguing, like, you made this, you made that. <laughs> like <laughs> yeah. blaming each yeah, other. Yeah, like blaming. It's kind of like kids, like, they, they drop some candies and I was like, oh, who dropped it? That's what I feel about the, the political arguments now. Yeah, yeah. It's sad though. I mean, seeing the thing suppressed to bring human beings together, but now it's become a... a, a yeah, yeah, it's just becoming like a conflict all over the country. Because yeah. I think when, I, not ever in my memory, but I think also in many people's memories, I think this is the first time like the world is so strongly by the pandemic. So mm -hmm. I think uh, only like, you know, in front of this disaster, only if we hold hands together and we help each other, that's the only way we can walk out from this disaster. Not just by arguing and, you know, like um, attacking, attacking yeah. each other. Mm -hmm. It's just wasting money and energy on it, but this you know, like you can maybe use the time and energy to do something else, maybe better to provide with some solutions for the virus, which I don't think people are much doing that now, right now. Yeah, I do believe there's a bunch of people who are doing that, but uh, only because the noises was more transport power uh, like a more be you know notice because the noise uh -huh. is bigger and uh -huh. it's really loud yeah, and yeah, that's yeah. a kind of like a shift of focus.